So it looks, so Marietta will be on the blue side and Mount Union will be on the red side. And we already see the Nautilus and Silas being banned. Nautilus is a very um, powerful champion in, in the uh, the bot lane of support. So Marietta does not want to play against that. Uh, Mount Union has banned Silas. He's a very good flex pick. Um, and we see Fiora and Aatrox also being banned. And we see the cane going out. And we'll see what... Uh, Mount Union decides to pick for their third ban. We see the Irelia being banned. Now, are they, does it look like they're targeting any certain roles here? Like they're afraid of any certain role or anything like that, any certain uh, lane that they're looking for? Or is it just kind of a mix of... Uh... It looks like... It looks like a good mix for Marietta's side. That they, they priority picked the Jarman uh, for... The, the thing is with Mount Union's picks is like Silas and Aurelia could be either top or mid. So those are kind of flex picks that can go either way. Aatrox is a very strong top laner right now. I think I've seen a couple of matches with uh, Aatrox's jungler, but you don't mm -hmm. see that too much. But it looks like um, Mountain is going with Lissandra and Braum. But now we'll see how Mary responds to it. Currently going through picks here for Pioneer to choose their uh, their next two slots, right? Yeah, so it looks like they're hovering over the Jinx. They have not locked that in yet, but... Okay, they did lock in the Jinx for AD Carry. And the Leona. Leona for the support. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Yeah, Jinx Leona is a pretty good uh, bot combination. I mean, Jinx is that hyper carry type person. If you get her going... It's pretty unstoppable, and Leona does a pretty good job with protecting her. It's, it's yeah, a she's, very... she's very tanky, and she's very good for the engage as well. Yes. So Leona does, is a very good support to go along with Jinx there. Um, we have the next two here coming up for uh, Mountain University. It looks like we have already picked most likely the mid laner in support. Uh, most likely, especially since they picked the Kale, that's probably going to be a top Kale. Uh, they did some rework for her not uh, about a month or so ago. I think I can't remember for sure. It's not too long ago, and they definitely revamped like her passive and how that works. So she's a pretty strong uh, top laner. And the, the couple the more bands coming out here now with Ari, which mm -hmm. is a would that would that have been a mid lane choice? Oh, that's definitely a mid lane choice. Because uh, we already it, have a Lissandra. Would Lissandra not be possible mid lane then? Well, Mary has not picked their mid laner yet. Oh, very so true. So okay. they're probably going to try to ban him out. And Ar Larson is pretty good with Ari. It's one of his top champions, so I'm not surprised with that. And we see that Mariana bans the Hecarim. Hecarim is one of those trolley type junglers. If you can, if you know that the other team might. Play it. You just don't want to mess with it. And we see the Kled being banned out. Uh, it's another popular top champion. We see Cressman playing that. I've seen him play that a couple of times. It's it's a pretty fun champion to play. All right. So the last ban here for Pioneer is being chosen. They have uh, 12 seconds to choose who they want to ban. Maybe have a little discussion of who the best choice is, and they went with Sejuani. Sejuani is another pretty popular um, jungler right now. Very good with engages. Um, yeah, it looked like uh, those last two bands were focused on trying to figure out limiting their jungler to where they hopefully have a, a little bit more freedom to move about in their lane mm -hmm. and push a little bit more, um, lessening the, the power of their jungler. Yes, yeah, so it looks like they went with the Olaf. For, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a jungler because I don't see an AD carry yet, so that has to be. A, it's not going to be an AD Olaf. So yeah, that's definitely their, their jungler. Yeah, the only assumptions I could say was Olaf is jungle, unless you switch Kale into jungle, but I don't know how relevant she is as a jungler nowadays. No, no, I don't think I've seen her jungle at all. We see the Echo coming out, so that's probably going to be going to Larson. I think all that's left For is their the mid lane top. there, so we need a top, top yeah. lane for Pioneer currently, and then we still are going to need an ADC for Mountain Union. Right, so at least the advantage is they, that uh, Meridian knows that Kale's going to be the top lane, so it's just a matter of picking the right pick that goes with this comp or going with the uh, or counter pick for Kale. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not very good with doing the matchup. And we see the Mundo coming out and the Draven. Ooh. All right. So we're going to have a Mundo top lane here against Kale. Um, I mean, Mundo with his regeneration abilities and stuff like that, but Kale does have, uh, she does have some sustain. She has some heal still, right? Uh, as so one of her, as a part of her kit. Yeah, she does have some heals. It's not that strong, but it is self-sustaining. It does drain a lot of the mana. So if if she has to keep using that to keep her up, that could be an issue. Uh, so now, where did my game go? Oh, 
Okay, there it is. All right, so we have the pick, so we'll get into the lobby here. So let's see here. So yeah, Mary is going to be on blue's side. So once they get that start up, we'll get it going. Now, with spectator mode, there is still a three-minute delay into the game itself. All right, so hold on one second. Let me get the audio going here. That way everyone can hear some audio. There we go. Yeah, so we still have a little time to the kill as we wait for them to pick the champions to be able to wait for the spectator relay to kick in. Okay. But so So now we're going through the same thing we just went through with Pro Draft, right? As yeah. far as the bands and everything. Is there a reason they don't do it in in here right now? That's a really good question. So a lot of it has to do with champion pools. Okay. So not everyone has all the champions. So what happens if in normal draft? Is when you pick the a champion, you can only pick champion the that you have. Fear controls so them. what could happen is like let's say like the last person on the list has a very limited champion pool. So you, you really don't have a whole lot of options of what your last pick can be. Right? Whereas someone who may have a lot of champions, you can pick whatever you want and then swap the different champions. What's nice about Pro Draft is you can pick any champion in any order and not have to worry about champion pools. Now obviously you would still pick champions that you can use yeah but when you actually pick the champions here notice that it's the champ selection is not the same order as what was done pro draft so each each person is going to just go ahead and pick their own champion since we already know well, they already the know what's banned and what can be banned in yes. the future anyway. and we already know what the picks is so like for larson up here we know he's going to pick it though because that's what he picked in pro draft we don't need to wait for uh, to pull up the pro draft again so like we didn't have to wait for uh MC Brimstone to pick Echo and then swap. Okay. So that's the advantage with this. Although technically they could have done the blind pick with this as well to make it a little bit faster for the selection processes. But yeah, just select the, clay the players you're going to be playing as and then you can go but without the band section. But okay. I was just curious why there's a, a change in the method when they have it built in already. But Oh yeah, I mean, this, is, uh, this is something that was agreed upon by the, the conference. Okay. With, just to make sure that everyone has a chance to pick champions because we've been in matches before outside of the conference where we were limited by champion pools and that kind of hindered it a little bit. Okay. So this, this definitely makes it more convenient. Uh, we're hoping to have our esports room set up to have League unlocked, which would be a really cool feature. Yeah, uh, which for is, all the characters and everything yeah. to be unlocked for everybody that's playing. Yeah, that's just gonna take a little time to make sure that everything's set up to support that, but we hope to, to do that. So for those of you who are new to our esports program, we do have a dedicated facility at Marietta College. It's pretty nice, actually. Uh, we have a couple of pictures on our website. So if you go to the Marietta College website and just search for esports, there's a few photos there. Um, we hope to add some more things to it. But uh, if you're in the area, feel free to, to come by and, and check it out. Uh, we'd love to let you see uh, what we have going here at the college. Mm -hmm. It's actually been growing quite a bit uh, since they started this little, working on it last year, right? Yeah, last year was our technically our first year. Yeah, so it's been a it's a, been a progress, but there's actually been a lot of progress. So it's been slowly growing, and uh, it's looking really good. Uh, I'm actually uh, it's it's fun being here um, on campus. Uh, with this uh, esports program going on here right now, casting and stuff. So appreciate uh, being invited by uh, Matt and Meredith College to be here right now. So yeah, and just thank you guys for your help with your support. Um, I know you guys have been hosting us on your channel, so that's we really appreciate with your community being involved with it. So we yeah. we hope to get their your community engaged with this as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming to help with commentating. I mean, any help is appreciated. I remember last year when I was broadcasting this stuff. I was doing all this in my apartment mm -hmm. while the games were playing. So trying to coach and broadcast when I'm not even on campus has been it quite is interesting tricky. to say the least. And you can go back to our videos on our YouTube channel, which you haven't checked out yet. Please be sure to do go do so. There's my shameless plug. <laughs> but uh, we, we did record uh, several of the matches for the spring. So that's up on our YouTube channel. It's also up on our uh, VODs on our Twitch channel. So um, with a uh, Twitch subscription, you will have access uh, to those VODs. But yeah, so I was doing all that in the apartment, trying to get everything set up on my computer, but now we actually have some uh, nice audio equipment. We got a machine dedicated for streaming. So just trying to improve the experience for all of you watching so you can get a 
a good experience to to see the the esports program. Yes, and this is going to be happening every Saturday with uh, Rocket League, League of Legends, Overwatch, and uh, that's it, right? No CSGO for right. Mary College. So you'll be seeing those three every weekend. So make sure you hit the follow button so you don't miss out on future streams uh, every weekend starting at 9 a.m. Yeah, we start at 9 a.m. Uh, and if you want to find out more about what's going on with the esports program, you can always follow us on social media. So if you go to Facebook and you just go to at Marietta College Esports, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Marietta Esports. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So that's bit.ly slash Marietta College Esports. We, we don't have a, a custom URL just yet, so we have to use the bit.ly link. Of course, yeah. But yeah, be sure to follow us there. And we try to keep updates about upcoming matches, things that's going on with the program. Um, but yeah, it, so far this has been a really good year for us just to get things started. The, the administration has been very supportive with uh, helping covering costs for a variety of things, whether it's new equipment, uh, whether it's apparel. So we're actually hoping to get things like jerseys and other things going. So we're pretty excited about that. Very good. Well, it sounds like a lot of stuff also in the future to be looking forward to. Um, one thing to look forward to right now is our uh, queue is now popped. So uh, we're going to be getting into the game here. Um, and actually starting uh, University of Mountain Union versus Marietta College. Yeah, so as soon as we get the uh, spectator mode set up, make sure take that off. Okay. So currently the players are taking up their lanes, heading into their, their starting locations, and uh, setting up their jungle rotation mm -hmm. yeah so this is a best of three um i mean pretty standard so it looks like we're seeing a, a standard line of scrimmage along the river um, some teams like to do invades to try to either get some vision in the red buffs uh area or try to see if they can get a quick early gank or a flash uh doesn't look like we're gonna see any of those kind of shenanigans in this game now it may happen in other games. Yeah, you very never true. know. Sometimes you can get a sneak in and maybe steal a, a buff or something along those lines even too to mess up the jungler's rotation. So mm -hmm. a lot of strategies you can do early game. But uh, everyone's taking their positions along the river here, trying to make sure they have at least some vision if something is trying to come into their territory. Yeah, I mean, what's nice about this is if an invade happens, then you could at least call everyone out and say, hey, there's an invade going on here so you can pull away to make sure you're not going to get ganked right away. And maybe even try to do a counter invade. Like I always like to try to tell players, like if they're invading, then that means that there shouldn't be anyone up in the top red jungle. So you can try to get some vision there, so you can kind of see what the jungler is doing. Because really, the early game is about farming and the jungle vision. Because mm -hmm. if you know where the opponent, the opposing jungler is, then you know when it's safe to push or when you need to fall back to make sure that you don't get ganked. Right now, it. Looks like, I think, yeah. So it looks like uh, Mary to start on the red side, and it looks like that the Mountain started on their their blue side jungle. As far as which buffs they're collecting right, right yeah, now, so Mary got their red buff first, and Mountain decided to go for the blue buff first. So we'll be seeing uh, looks like Jarvan heading back up to the northern part of the map, while uh, Olaf is sticking around in the south part here. Yeah, he's just getting the uh, the wolves right now, so he'll probably be rotating up towards his red side of the jungle. Uh, afterwards so really the question is going to be is when do when will the gang start happening so when will Olaf or Jarvan try to set up something to be able to gank any of the, the lanes and a lot of that uh, pertains to the, the laners themselves so uh, if we get bottom lane here to start overextending and pushing too hard it's going to leave them much more vulnerable for Olaf to come in and do a gank or a uh, if you don't know what a gank is, it's going to be pushing in to try to get a, a kill, kind of a, a, like a surprise attack, um, mainly because they've overextended and pushed themselves into a, uh, a dangerous position. So you mean if Mount Union overextends or if Marietta overextends? If, if like Marietta overextends up into U.S. territory. Okay. We see a little bit of a skirmish going on in the mid lane, but not too much. But yeah, actually, if Marietta overextends, that is when Mount Union would want to try to get Because if they, if they push up too much, then you can have Olaf coming in from behind. But we do see that there is a ward uh, down there, so that he's have sufficient. And Jarvan had the flash to get away from the Olaf. The Olaf flash fishing after him, but Mundo's coming down. Have a, have a fight continuing as well with uh, Lissandra coming yeah, down Olaf here too. Olaf is getting pretty low, and Olaf will go down. So it is a one for one. But looks like Kale is coming down to try to uh, help have, with it. Yeah, we have Mundo and Echo both at half health here. 
Um, kind of sandwiched a little bit, but it looks like everyone's kind of returning back to the lanes um, after a 1-1 uh, trade-off. Yeah, although Mountain Dew did get the first blood gold uh, as a result of that. There, there is a, they have added some bonuses mm -hmm. uh, to the game so that there's an extra gold for first blood, there's some extra gold for first turret. Uh, so they've added that um, a while back, so some extra bonuses to try to incentivize getting the first blood, getting the first turret. But with that said, Marion is up by just a little bit of gold. It's still very early in the game. And a lot of that is coming through just how well Marietta is farming. If you look at the CS in all the lane for at least the, the main carries, top, mid, and bottom, they are ahead. And in, in most of them. At, at the very least, uh, bottom lane is tied, but they're not behind in any of the lanes as far as CS goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like the really big difference is with the top lane between Kale and Mundo, and part of that, Kale is one of those where she needs time to ramp up. Mm -hmm. So like once her passive kicks in, like you remember her old E, the 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 way the splash damage was working. The the, the flame sword, right? Yeah. yeah. So that has turned into a passive. So okay. that I can't remember the exact mechanics, but once that ramps up, then that be that E turns into a passive, and we see Jarvan going here for the gank, and Mary is going to try to get to get the flash out of Draven. Doesn't look like they're gonna get the kill, but they did get the flash from Draven, so a very nice play there to get that gank from him. Yeah, if they can keep track of that that time, it might give them a little bit of opportunity to come in when his flash is still down and capitalize on a kill there. We're only at level four, so we don't have any ultis yet. Uh, Jarvan maybe could have gotten a little bit more there, had it been a little later, but we'll get to those points here um, after a while. Yeah, but what's nice about this game the Flash is if you go when you have the ultis, yeah, you he won't be able to flash out. Like he won't be able to flash out. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. You see a little bit of training off here going in the mid lane, but... Looking like coming out on a univer Mount University's favor there in the mid lane. Olaf there too, uh, really close. The mid lane. Mundo's playing some pretty big damage. He's going for the diving. Does get the kill. And, and he walks away just a really sliver close. of health. Oh, that, how, that, how low is he? I, I gotta check you. That out. tower hit. That tower hit took him real low. Yeah. Luckily, the minion stopped attacking at just the right time. And Mundo has some great, uh, great region. So able to pull off a, uh, a tower dive, killing Kale, gonna help push him into an earlier lead uh, at a 2-0. Right now, he also got that kill earlier on Olaf. Right, yeah. The, so yeah, the extra gold is definitely going to help there. He's already got a bounty just because of those two kills. And the fact he's almost he's up by almost 20 CS compared to Kale. But once again, once Kale ramps up and her passive kicks in, that's when she's going to start becoming a threat. Not a substantial threat, but it is still worth noting. At this point, we do see that Mundo and Echo uh, and Lissandra have all hit level 6, so ultis are now starting to come up, so we should be seeing them in place soon. So. Although Nox is still a little bit behind, going at level 4, so I don't anticipate him trying to get any ganks until he can get his Cataclysm. And Olaf is already at level 5, so most likely Olaf's going to get 6 first, so we can probably see the next gank attempt by now. And then as far as bot lane, we have had, uh, both teams now have both returned and bought a few new things to return back. Uh, before Mountain University left, they did place a ward in the bush there on bot lane as well. So, at least giving some visions, watching out for some ganks, or maybe just being able to see what the uh, pioneers are going to be doing when they come back into lane. Yeah, it looks like both sides are trying to get deep vision in their respective jungles. We see looks like pioneers though might be going for dragon. Well, not uh, yeah for dragon. Yep, they are going for dragon. Uh, it is a cloud drake, so that's just going to get move the speed. So it's not as great compared to like an infernal drake or an ocean drake, but it's still a dragon. It's still gold, right? It's still, it's still a little gold, bit of a buff. It's movement speed. It's a buff. It's still gonna help them out, especially like for Jarvan going for the engage, or Leona going into popping her ulti, or even Mundo trying to run in just, just to get a little uh, axe throw there, you know? Yeah. So now do any of these? Yeah, we do have Kale and Lissandra also with teleport. So depending on what happens, we could possibly get a teleport to the wards, uh, maybe down bot lane, get a little gank. Yeah, it looks like we do see a gank attempt going in the bot lane with Olaf coming in. See the Leona all come in to stun Olaf, 
And there comes Jarvan with the counter gank. Or at least you're gonna help. And Echo coming down and Lissandra. We're gonna be having a big match here in a second here. And there's the Echo, and it looks like Braum is gonna go. And there goes Braum, but Lissandra's not too far behind, but she's getting spotted out. Now we, we have four versus three down in the bottom lane currently. Looks like uh, Echo may be coming back into the, their lane. So that was just a really good rotation there. Just mm -hmm. knowing that the Olaf was going to come down. So not only was Jarvan there, uh, or MC Knox, but Larson also came down to help. So that was just a really good... Yeah. Uh, really good awareness uh, by yeah, Olaf well, uh, and Nox. Having, having these wards, they had two wards in River while Olaf was trying to make that push, which just gave them enough vision to know, oh, we better come on down. And speaking of wards, while trying to take out these wards, we're having a collapse on Olaf right now, having to use his ulti yes. and his flash to try to get out. And it might not save him with that. Echo really pushing, going under this tower, going for a dive, but they're Echo oh, managing to pull back. right there. Although Lissandra does get the kill, so he does go down. So it is a, a two for one. So that actually went into Mount Union's favor. So they were able to get the Olaf, but I think Larson just took too many tower hits, even though he ulted out for the save. So that part was really good, but the rest of Mount Union was there to collapse on him. Right now, Jinx is trying to hold the tower back a little bit, make sure these minions stay off. Um, while she waits for her support to get back down. Uh, mid lane still kind of just back and forth a good bit. Not too much action in the mid lane yet. Uh, a lot more happening down bot lane. Um, and a little bit top lane. Uh, Mundo not afraid to get some pokes over on, uh, over on Kale. I mean, he does have the, uh, the range advantage. He'll be just throwing his axes just... I mean, Mundo's philosophy is just ABCs of cleaving. Always be cleaving. <laughs> Bruno was actually was one of my favorite champions when I was playing a while back. Uh, you're not gonna believe what I'm about to say, mm -hmm. but I was I did a uh, like a local tournament many years ago, mm -hmm. and I played Bruno top, and we we won that game. It was like, let's try something for the finals. Let's try Bruno supports, uh -huh. and it works. That, so, I mean. Honestly, I believe a lot of it because I've seen. A, oh, we got some top lane action. We got Olaf coming in for a gank because Mundo's overextended. He had to pop the flash and the ult to, to get away. The question is, can his health regen keep him alive long enough to get to the tower? It, it, I mean, it's keeping him up. Jarvan coming in trying to get a save. We might be get a counter gank here to take out Kale and Olaf. Echo up here as well, chasing after the Kale. And the teleport's coming in for Lozano, and that was probably a bad teleport. Thing. Although she does get the Echo, she's going to try to get away. So that was it's like a two for one trade, maybe maybe a two for two. Mundo needs to get out of there. And of course, the camera switches way to the bottom. But it looks like Mundo will get away. Uh, so that was a. Uh, yeah, Mundo gets away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a two for one trade. So uh, once again, just really good awareness uh, by both sides, yeah. actually. Lissandra did a good job with her teleport coming up there to at least take one kill um, there with Echo rather than just having a 2-0 uh, against him. Yeah, I thought for a second it was going to be a little too late because both the others were already dead, but she was able to um, get that pick right there so that kind of even up. But it's still a favorable trade for the Pioneer, so it was great for Preston to be able to, to get out of there, keep his health up long enough for Nox to get into pop the Cataclysm to get Kale down. Getting a lot of push there on Braum here on bot lane. And then we see Olaf coming again, and they had some vision, but Leona might be in trouble. Although Braum is getting pretty low. Braum was already low at the start of this, but using his ulti. I think Leona may be going down here. Olaf's not letting up, keeping the push. Draven taking a kill. Jinx did manage to take out Braum though. But there is Echo to retaliate. And now uh, Mountain University is stuck in Pioneer's jungle, trying to find a way to escape. Draven's sneaking into a bush, but is Jarvan gonna find him? Echo coming yeah, in. he's gonna find him, he's gonna Echo find him. Echo finds him, takes the kill, double kill for Echo. Yes. Meanwhile, Mundo pushing this tower hard. And this also may be opening up Pioneer going for uh, another dragon. Yeah, the Mountain Drake just got up, so they are going straight for it. Because there's no way for Mountain to respond. They're, they're 80 carries down, their jungler is still at their base. So there's no, yeah, this is a free dragon. So capitalizing all around there on a, a double kill and a dragon. Uh, meanwhile, Mundo able to push Kale with no jungler or anyone able to uh, to stop him. Just doing some extra damage to the tower. Our tower's already at half health. 
Yeah, um, and, with, and with that Mountain Drake, that's going to allow them to do more damage to objectives. So they can do more damage to towers, do more uh, damage to future dragons, or even the Baron or the Rip Carol. So that is going to be a huge help for them with uh, trying to take objectives. Well, speaking of Rift Herald, we only have, is that 15 minutes that it changes? Yeah, so, yeah, so beginning you have Rift Herald, at 20 minutes it turns into a Baron. So, so 20 minutes, so we only have uh, about, what, 6 minutes left of Rift Herald, so yeah, we yeah. may be actually seeing Mundo, speaking of Rift Herald. Mundo's over here, bothering him maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's maybe he's just kind of placing some wards, getting a little bit of, uh, a little bit of vision there. Yeah, I think the, what it is is he has a Sunfire Cloak, so that's just doing passive damage. So if he goes out there and puts his vision, he's going to aggro it anyway. So that was just to get some vision. System. But now Mount Union is painting the Rift Herald, so they may try to a lot go of them, for it. Yeah, they're all collapsing in here on the northern part of the river. Uh, taking out the ward, but we're going to have Jarvan Mundo coming down. Meanwhile, though, bot lane, uh, they're pushing this tower. So it's going to be Tower maybe versus Rift Herald. Yeah, I, th I think Marietta is going to be conceding this. It's just too many for Mount Nino top, but that means that you'll be able to trade for a first tower, it looks like. And we do see Larson kind of getting chased out a little bit. There's oh, we see the Cataclysm go in and Kale goes down already. Pioneer pushing in a lot here. Uh, if, with Echo pushing in, we're going to get some kills here. We may see Pioneer take the kills and the Rift Herald both. Olaf chasing after this jungler. Echo coming in to try to save him. Jarvan goes down, but it looks like Olaf is going to be going down as well from Echo. Yeah, so... So, not, so Mary, they got three kills from that, and, and they got the Rift Herald, and so the they're able to take it from them. And they got first tower, and it looks like they're going to be... Well, they got some damage on the mid tower, so that was just... Well, once again, what they did... Oh, this is beautiful. And here's Rift Herald up here at the very top. I guarantee this is going to be a, a taking of the top tower. We don't have... A, we have a while until Kale gets back. She's back in the base, though. Meanwhile, ADC and support are taking mid lane. We may be seeing all tier one all tier all tier one towers are down for uh, Mount Union. So there's been a very good push. Um, that Rift Herald uh, battle may not have been the best choice for Mount Union at that time. No, yeah, well, I mean, what happened there was this Maria did a good job with recognizing that they were going for the Rift Herald and waiting for the right time to collapse with the Jarvan Cataclysm. So they were to get in there, Mundo popping his ult and popping his. Uh, his e and w just built that extra damage and they just popped kill right away so that's how that worked and then Lissandra came in so uh then olaf i remember right was trying to go back onto jarvin to chase him away but Lissandra and echo came in and right now um echo's at five two and three with more cs than Lissandra, so he's definitely uh, a lot easier than Lissandra. so he's going to win that 1v1 every time so currently we have three bounties on Pioneer side right now between Mundo, uh, Echo, and Jinx. So there is some money to be had by Mount Union if they can get some good engagement. But right now it's 13-6 as far as uh, kills. And this Draven is taking a lot of damage. And there goes uh, another kill for uh, yep. Echo. And so with that, about 17 minutes into the game, the Pioneers are up by about 6,000 gold. And we see... Uh, we're all going in trying to get some damage from the Buddha, but it's not gonna work. He's just got way He's so too much tanky. Health. So much regen, that ulti coming out just keeps him alive. Mundo, and you, know, you can't kill Mundo. That's no, it. You, you, you cannot. You, but yeah. you, also, you can't focus him, but you also can't just let him run around and be. No, uh, be you can't free, ignore you know? him, but. And Echo just back and forth with Kale there. Taking the final tower hit. Oh, oh. and the shutdown with the minion, the, the two main tower hits, and then the minion finish drop gets the shutdown to Kale. But he still gets the kill. He got the kill. We also, uh, Pioneer got a uh, second tower on bot lane. So really getting some pushes coming in here. Um, gold lead here. We got 32.5k to 25.8k. There's a good gold lead on Pioneer's side. So now the question is. What's going to happen next? What's the next objective for the Pioneer? So they have to think about, okay, we got this goalie, we got these towers, so what should we be looking at next? Cloud Drake's coming up in 23 seconds, so it's looking like that they're they're hovering around nearby. They probably know that Mount Union is knowing that is, is aware that Drake's coming up, so I think they're just staying there to see if they can get a pick, like if anyone comes by to go for it, but it doesn't look like anyone's going to fall for that. But they are going to be going for this Cloud Drake that's going to be up in 5 seconds. We'll wait on that Cloud Drake, trying to wait for maybe someone to come in, get a little bit of vision, and jump on him. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah. here's the thing. Take, take a, if you look at the map, look how much vision Marietta has in her blue side jungle. 
is they are completely aware if they were going to come down for drag. So that was a free drag, and Mountain Union could not contest it at all. Marietta is playing the vision game very well. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side of that, there's a lot of vision for Mount Union in the northern part of the jungle. Um, but the, the southern part of the jungle on Mount Union's side, though, looks to be mainly controlled by Pioneer. Yeah, so they got... Yeah, so they're aware of what's going on in their jungle. But the advantage that Marietta has is they're also aware of what's going on in Mount Union's jungle, especially on their blue side. Red side, not so much, but there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of activity going on there anyway, so they don't need the vision there right now. But then, once again, the question is going to be, what's the next objective? What's the next push? What are they going to be uh, going for? So, I mean, I would think that that top tower is pretty low, that that would probably want to, want to focus on next, or even just try to push down mid. Because if you can get the mid rank open up, that opens the whole map for you. <laughs> and now we just oh. see Mountain trying to clear some vision. Yeah. With the to try to make it more difficult for the pioneers to see what's going on there, but we'll probably see some more wards. It's going to be the battle for wards. See, there, it, now Marietta's killing wards and putting their own wards in. Yeah, it looks like Mundo may be trying to get a little bit of a push down bot lane. Uh, he is a very good one to be able to choose to, to push in and then also be able to run away and survive if he was to get attacked, but he's also getting vision here in the, in the southern part. Get a little bit of pressure push bot lane you can open up for your adc and support who are top lane to push in and take that top tower yeah and mundo can could just split push if he wants to he has teleport so if there is ever an engage in any other way he can just teleport right in you see echo trying to get some damage onto brom and you see the ulti coming out so we're really looking for a fight here and draven's already getting very low and draven goes down so this should be a top tower for marietta and the cataclysm comes, comes out Although Jarvan flashing out of his own ulti here, trying to get away, get get regrouped with his team. Mundo coming in from the south side. Yeah, that might not have been the best use of that ult, uh, just because there wasn't a whole lot of follow-up with this. But we do see some pressure going into the mid tower, and then we're seeing the tail ult starting to kick in, so that's going to make it easier for her to clear waves. We have Mundo trying to do a little bit of poke here with his uh, with his cleaver, um, pushing in. They're going to be taking mid tower here, and they're pushing uh, Mount Union back a little bit further. Yes, Mount Union just trying to get any kind of poke, any kind of uh, damage they can onto the pioneers. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to take their red buff and maybe rotate top because there is a minion wave there, so clear some jungle while they're at it. Meanwhile, we have a few uh, Mount Unions going back, trying to get a little bit of heal, trying to also get a little bit of uh, new, new purchases. Hopefully, try to balance out this fight that's been coming, but. And Olaf all, overextends a little bit into his own jungle trying to clear out some vision and gets jumped on by all of the pioneers. At this point in the game, you cannot face check a bush. Because that's a, that's a free bears because that, that's a jumper. They can't. They have no smite to be able to try to combat it, uh, like a smite against it. And then the rest of the team is all back in base currently trying to get pushed out. There's, there's nothing that uh, Mount Union can do right now. I mean, they're going to try to do something here. But. Draven tries to ulti and get a steal on the Baron, but he's too late. Baron has already been taken by the Pioneers. Meanwhile, Echo's coming in from behind, while the rest of the Pioneers are collapsing in on him. Jarvan with his Cataclysm. Uh, meanwhile, Leona trying to uh, keep yeah, Lissandra at bay a little bit. Stun her, keep her from getting away, but she does manage to get an yeah. escape. That's a three for nothing. That's going to be an inhibitor tower, probably an inhibitor. Maybe the game might be enough of the game, actually. I mean, they have a big push here. We have 15 seconds for Braum. Another another 15 seconds now before they're... Uh, they only have two people. Yeah, we have 10 seconds before anyone else comes back. And they got the Baron buffs. I mean, they don't have any candy minions. Mundo can just tank these towers, take them out. Okay, now we're... Now Mary's back on board. They might have got just a little too greedy there. Oh, uh, and there goes Mundo down. That's his, that's his... Oh, no. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah. That's his first death of the game, though. 6-1. But that does give a bounty uh, bonus to... Uh, I forget who killed him, but it does give it over to Mountain Union as a little bounty bonus. So. Although, with that said, the Pioneers are still ahead by about... Looks like... 10,000 gold, just a little over 10,000. So that's a pretty substantial lead at 23 minutes into the game. So, Mary just has to play a little bit smart there. I mean, it was a good effort to get that first uh, Nexus Tower, 
but they definitely overextended there and got punished for it. So Barry's just have to make sure that they don't make that kind of same mistake. Because if they keep tr doing that, then that's going to give Mountain Union a chance to come back in this game. True. Uh, what Pioneer's been able to do, though, is they've, they've opened up that mid lane. You're going to be having now the, the, the bigger tur uh, minions, right? Super minions are going to be able to push in, and there's only one turret to defend. So you're going to have to keep someone there to make sure they keep their nexus safe. Meanwhile, you're going to be able to get the Pioneers to take things like Dragon like they just did, and also push bot lane and top lane and get even more super minions by taking more inhibitors. Yes, getting the inhibitor was a huge help because now they have the, they have the pressure in the mid lane that they need. So we've seen them rotating the bot and trying to see if they get the pressure there. And they just caught Lissandra off guard. And she's just, well, she's going to pop her all, but it's only going to delay the inevitable. Yeah, Braum tries to come down a little bit, try to help, but he, he can't do anything against three pioneers right now. Um, they're pushing in bot lane here. Meanwhile, top lane is being pushed by minions. If they stay bot lane here, these super minions and are going to be pushing in mid lane. Someone's going to have to rotate to make sure they take care of that as well. They're not going to be able to ignore that completely. But they also can't ignore this push bot lane. We see a fight going in here, and the cataclysm, and they also go out. Rombo goes out. Power goes down. Still pushing in, working on this inhibitor while also pushing back to the uh, uh, Mount Union. So they push everyone back. It looks like they're going to try to go for the second. Maybe? No. No, they're, they're backing it, off a little bit. Okay, so they, they... I think the last time it kind of scared them a little bit. They're like, well, we can push oh, it now. Let's kind of... They said we're going for that tower anyway. Let's get a feel of how it is. What do they have? They got the tower, so now they're getting... They the clear out the rest of Mount Union here. I don't think there's anything that they can do. Uh, Draven trying to get back, but he, he can't. There we go. That's going to be the end of the yep. game there. That's a 1-0 lead for uh, Mary College, five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well executed. I mean, overall, they just they played very cleanly. They, they played smart. The, the one mistake there was going extending just a little bit when they were trying to go for the Nexus Towers. But other than that... No, Ross yeah, the uh, well. the Rift Herald play whenever it was uh, it was like three to four, uh, they they managed to just kind of play it just well enough to to not only get some kills with it, also to take that Rift Herald, which then allowed for all tier one towers to be taken almost at the same time. Yes. Uh, so just give us a second here to get things set up as we get game two underway. So that does give the Pioneers a 1-0 lead. So. Uh, just hang tight for a minute as we get the lobby set up for game two. Uh, so just hang tight as I try to get the team set up here. Okay. All right, guys. So while they get this next uh, this next game set up here, um, go through and uh, make sure there's no subs or anything like that that they need to do. Um, and also, I imagine they may be switching sides as well. Uh, We'll be uh, looking into the second match of this series. Now, it is a best of three, so if Merida College can manage to win this next game, that'll be taking the series. Um, if Mount Union can take the win, we'll be seeing a third game to uh, see who takes the series for League of Legends. Also, once League of Legends is done, we're going to be going into Overwatch at 11 a.m. We may also be going a little over, so uh, once we finish up with uh, League of Legends, just stick with us. Um, probably after a few minutes, we'll be going into the Overwatch matches. Yeah, we're just going to get the uh, the pro draft set up. Um, so we'll be going back into another pro draft here. We'll be seeing uh, maybe some new bands. We may be seeing some Mundo bands. Uh, looking at uh, who Pioneers were able to utilize this past game, they, they may be uh, making Mountain Union kind of look and second guess who they were banning but um while echo did a really good job uh ari is a very good choice for uh marietta's mid lane so we're gonna have to be seeing like what choices are they gonna be making in their bands and uh will marietta stick with the same bands because it seemed to work out okay for them this time but we'll see what switch ups we have here All right, while we get this pro draft thing set up, I want to say thank you to everybody who's joining in, watching us with our first Great Lakes Esports Conference uh, matches. Um, you already saw, hopefully, our first Rocket League match a little bit earlier today. We're into our League of Legends one now. We'll be having our first Overwatch uh, Great Lakes Esports Conference match later today. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, uh, we will have it up on our YouTube channel later on. What we usually try to do is we'll have those up about a week after the broadcast. So this time next week, 
uh, it will be available. But if you can't wait that long, you can always subscribe to our channel on Twitch. Uh, so all the VODs are going to be up there, so you can check them out anytime you want. And you might think, well, what if I don't want to pay the money for that? Well, if you have Twitch Prime, then you get a free sub every month you can use to any channel you want. Now, if you don't have, if you don't have Twitch Prime... Don't forget yet. that today's or this month is also September. Yes. So uh, if you're going to be subbing, this is a great month to sub, especially if you've never subbed before, because it's 50% off a sub. So make sure you guys look into that. Um, lots of great options to be able to get the, the sub um, for your favorite Twitch channel. And if you still prefer not to do that, if you have Amazon Prime, then you have Twitch Prime for free. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just create a Twitch account, no cost to you, link it to your Amazon account, and you get that Twitch Prime automatically. And it looks like they have started, so let me things over here. So we are back in the pro draft. So Mountain Union will be on the blue side, so uh, they're already banning Silas first. So so far, no major changes, but I would expect to see Mountain Union making some adjustments in their pick bans. Yeah, I, I don't know if I see very many from Marietta as far as their changes in bans. You may see some of the same ones because they seem to do pretty well with what they went with last time. But will we see maybe like a Mundo ban or a Jinx ban or something may, maybe the, to kind of alter a little bit of what was being banned? Or are they still going to be really afraid of what could be with the other ones that they banned last time? Right, yeah. So they might just think, okay... Maybe they might think they, they can handle what they played against. But I, I would anticipate like a Mundo ban or uh, or even an Echo ban. But right now, it's they're doing the same bans mm -hmm. as last time. Yeah, Nautilus was the first one they had last time as well as Fiora. Um, and we're also seeing the exact same ones from Marietta. No, that, that is Marietta's ban. So we banned uh, Nautilus. Yeah, yeah and sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, they switched they switch sides. sides. They switched sides yes. on me. <laughs> All right, so they do get the Hecarim first pick. Uh, so I know so there's a Hecarim likes... jungler. Yes, that is definitely good. Yeah, he's not going to be a mid or a top. That's definitely a Hecarim jungle, and he's very annoying to, to play against. Oh, he's very quick. He can, he can get uh, places from jungle to lane uh, quite quickly. Yeah, I mean, with his, with his uh, ult, you don't even need a flash. So oh, you, yeah. you can just um, go into Ghost for your summoner and just charge right in. And we see the Zyra Rakan combo coming out for the bot lane. Very popular for many groups just because of the synergy that they have with each other. Mm hmm We see the Oriana coming out for their mid lane. So interesting that they've already uh, grabbed the Oriana this early. I mean, one of the things that I, this is just my thinking, but I always like to try to save the mid lane pick near the end, unless like, to you're watch out for the bands, right, or the the counters. Exactly. So unless you really, really, really want to prioritize a particular champion, so now this gives Marriott a chance to counter Oriana with something else. And Larson has a very big pool for mid laners. So he definitely can have something in his pocket that would take care of Oriana. And we see the... The support for Jaina for Mountain Union here. Yeah, that's interesting. And we see the Kled being picked for top. I know Cressman really uh, likes that. I'm also getting word um, that Mountain Union is subbing in, uh, their top laner for this game. So, I mean, both teams are allowed to sub. Um, so they are going to do that, which is perfectly fine. But just making sure people are aware that there is a, a sub in the top lane for Mountain Union. But uh, yeah, so Marietta goes with Kled for the top lane. So that's a blind pick as well because uh, Mountain Union has not picked their uh, top lane yet. And we see Marietta, well, they already have their AD carries. So they don't need to uh, go up against Jinx, so they decide mm -hmm. to take her out. Now the question, okay. There's the Echo. I, I would expect the... The Echo ban, since Larson did very well that we see Now, it. one thing we haven't seen is last time there was an Ari ban, was there not? So, right. I know I, you said before Mary College has like a I would an say, Ari that they like to play. I would expect the Ari ban right here. So, and then a Darius uh, ban from Marietta's side here. Yep. And there's the Ari ban. Yep. So, we'll be seeing what gets picked mid lane for Marietta. Uh, Sejuani, who was banned last time, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, actually getting tossed into the mix here for Marietta. Yeah, so right now, Mary is putting together a pretty good engage comp with Rakan, Kled, and Sejuani. Uh, all of them have a way to just jump into the uh, the other team and just causing all sorts of disruptions. We see the Jax going in for the top lane. I don't know how well that matchup is between Jax and, and Kled. So for those that are watching, like, you should know these things. I'm sorry. And then we have Misfortune as ADC for Mountain Union. Um, Going to be paired with Jaina. And bot lane, they'll be going with uh, Zion Rakan. Ooh, uh, 
Viger. Yes. All right. So we have Viger from mid lane. Um, he can really start snowballing later on. So that's a, uh, 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 it can be a very powerful pick, but if you can, if he can be halted, he could be almost worthless too at the same time. So it's kind of a, you could kind of get both sides there. Yes. He is uh, very fun to pick. Uh, now, unfortunately, I missed the lobby before they started it. So I can't show champ select. That's my bad, but we will still be able to spectate the game. Yeah. But uh, we already saw the champ select. So we already know um, what's going to be coming in uh, for both teams. We're going to be having uh, Hecarim as a jungler and uh, Sejuani as a jungler. Mm -hmm. um, for Merida College and for Mount Union. And then we'll be going into bot lane. We'll be having Jaina and Miss Fortune for Mount Union versus uh, Rakan and uh, Zaya. Yeah. That, and then uh, mid lane, we'll be seeing some Orianna versus Viger. And finally, top lane, you'll be seeing Jax versus Kled. So yeah. we have at least the teams made up. Uh, bands have already been done and everything. So while we get this lobby set up, and uh, we'll get into the game here in probably about three minutes or so is the uh, countdown timer yeah, for getting the, into it. So There's an automatic spectator delay uh, in this just to make sure that people can't be watching what people are doing in real time. Because if you can see what your opponent's doing at that moment in the game, then you can give that information to the other team. And that could definitely skew the results. So we don't want that happening. Um, but yeah, let's just take a look at this comp while we have a minute. Uh, as I say, yeah, Mary has a pretty good engage comp. Uh, especially like if you get the Sejuani out there to kind of freeze everyone and uh, actually with the Vigar can actually put his cage around to trap people and then just pop the stuff. So this is kind of a comp where you just group up everyone together and just chain CC them and just do massive damage. I was kind of surprised. Like, I don't. We didn't see Mundo in bans or in picks or anything there, did we? Just Echo was banned as far as from last game. Yeah, I was, I was surprised about that. I guess they, they weren't too concerned about the Mundo. I, I know Mundo is not necessarily something that Mary to prioritize. Uh, I think they prioritize more of the Clad just because how good he is right okay. now uh, with his ability to kind of charge in and even attack from the distance. Uh, so since, since Clad was banned last time, that's why they went with the Mundo. But this time they were able to get uh, Clad, so they were able to grab it. Very good. All right, and then I'm assuming uh, Sejuani is a, another big choice uh, from Marietta, uh, given that he was banned last time, but maybe choosing to alternate the, some bans and stuff actually opens that up, so we'll get to see uh, some different jungle options where we used to have Jarvan now as Sejuani. Yeah, I mean, Sejuani, it's, it's not just a pick that's priority for, for Marietta, but it, she's actually just a very good jungler right now in the current meta. Uh, you see it in LCS, LCK, you, you see it in a variety of different pro games, uh, just because, like, She's able to sustain very well, and she just has that really good alt engage mm -hmm. uh, to go in there and uh, be able to stun people with her abilities. So it's just a, a very powerful uh, jungling champion. And she can also be quite tanky, too, so you get, oh, yes. you get some good frontline engagement going on there. Gives some room for uh, Viger and for uh, Zaya to be able to uh, do a little bit more damage from the back line. Yeah, that is worth mentioning, just the fact that uh, Marietta's team with Rakan and Sejuani can both be pretty good frontliners. Uh, whereas if you look at Mount Union's side, I mean, you could possibly build a, a tanky build for Hecarim. And Jax, possibly. Possibly. Um, I've seen some tankier Jaxes more using utilizing the stuns, but I, I've seen usually a little bit more damage because he can really start cranking out, especially on towers, taking down towers mm -hmm. on, as a split push. Yeah, so you really want to build that attack speed for Jax to make him uh, formidable and something you just don't want to go up against. So. Yeah. A little squishier on the Mount Union side than I would say on uh, Marietta side. Yes. Um, but with that said, you cannot count out that Oriana. If, if Oriana gets a really good ulti in there and just shockwaves everyone in the middle, uh, that could definitely cause a lot of disruption. You, you pop that in with the Hecarim multi and then like a Janna Tornado to knock people up, that could cause a couple kills. So Marietta's just going to have to be very careful that they don't group up all in a very small, tight space. Okay, so it looks like Marietta is in game, so at least get the spectator up. Uh, so let's get that going here. Where is that? So All right, so we're still in spectator delay, but they have at least uh, got their game started. But we'll have to wait just a couple of minutes uh, while this is going on. So uh, as we're waiting, just as a reminder, uh, this is a, a best of three. So Maria has won one. So if they win this, then they, they win they'll the They'll take the series, yeah. yeah. They'll take the series. And then after that, uh, we'll still have Overwatch. Now, that's supposed to start at 11 o'clock. I don't think that's going to happen just yet. Yeah, it's currently 10.55 right now. Yeah, so we're, 
once we finish up League of Legends, there might be a small little break while Overwatch gets set up, but then we'll be going pretty much straight into Overwatch, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that if I ever correctly, the Overwatch team is already here, so they're getting warmed up, they're getting ready to go. Very well. So, and guys, don't forget, every Saturday we'll be doing uh, the Great Lakes Esports Conference. We'll be going through Rocket League, League of Legends, and Overwatch with the uh, Marietta Esports team versus uh, next year. Next week is going to be Trine yep. University, right? Yeah, and Trine has a very good esports program. Uh, they it's probably one of the the biggest one. I don't know if it's like the biggest in okay. Indiana, but it is a pretty well put together program. Uh, if you look at the schools in the conference that could actually win the whole thing, Trine is going to be one of those contenders. Okay. Although, but Marietta's League of Legends team, they could definitely take the conference title in League of Legends for sure. Uh, but Trine is going to be a very formidable opponent uh, in this league. Gotcha. How how long has uh, Meredith's League of Legends team been like playing together? Um, four of them been playing together for several years, actually, even before we had the esports program. And then we brought in uh, Brimstone last year as our AD carry. In fact, that was the only piece of the puzzle that they were missing. Gotcha. Um, but so they have some pretty good synergy. They know that they know each other very well from just the amount of experiences they've had with playing the games together. Well, I just definitely saw some good synergy last game, uh, just between some of the engagements they had, and also the, the characters they chose, um, being able to get some good traps and jump in, and then also uh, uh, just keep each other alive, uh, where the other team was trying to kind of struggled a little bit between like getting a pullback when they needed to uh, disengage or when to engage. So yeah. they did a really good job. The big advantage they had that last game was rotations. That was the big thing. Anytime that Meredith was trying to make a play, whether it was in the top lane or the bot lane, you saw Larson coming, rotating to those lanes to help. So if he can keep doing that, so if, that means he has to stay ahead in his lane. So if he can stay ahead in the lane, then that gives him the opportunity to be able to roam top or bottom okay. to be able to help with any of those types of gauges. Because, I mean, a 3v2, a 3v1 or a 3v2 is uh, definitely useful. Yeah. But if you can get four people on there, then you have a really good shot of being able to, to succeed in that game, whether it's getting a flash or a kill. Gotcha. And it looks like both mid lane and top lanes have teleport to hopefully help with a little bit of uh, rotation and being able to get to bottom lane, get to top lane, get wherever they need to quickly with uh, teleports on minions or teleports on wards. So, um, yeah, a, a lot of those uh, a lot of those rotations and calls uh, so far have been done really well from what we've seen. So the game is starting up now. So uh, give us one second here. We'll be switching into it. Characters are choosing up their. Uh, their items and getting their placements in their uh, either in their lane or in their jungle. Yeah, so just hang on tight just one second as they try to get spectator shots. It's almost there. So here we go. Uh, so this is game two of Married College versus Mountain Union. Welcome to Summoner's So we see everyone taking their positions along the uh, the river here, making sure to watch out for any kind of uh, invades from the opposing teams. So far, looks like everyone just kind of staying the staying defensive, neutral. No one's really pushing too hard, uh, so it doesn't look like any invades this game. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, don't see any invades going on here. I mean, usually every now and then, like at the second game, the, the team might go, "Let's try to go to invade," but no one seems to be trying that this time. Mm -hmm. And I would I would guess by uh, jungler placements right now, both junglers are gonna be going for their red buff first. Yeah, right over their blue buffs. Uh, yeah, we see Hecarim down in their red jungle, so it looks like that's what they'll go for. Uh, Sejuani switching up, though. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to go for their blue. Looks fragile. Which I think is good for Sejuani. You want to make sure that she has that uh, mana regen just to be able to, to keep farming. So that makes sense. It's actually probably quite common for red side to go blue uh, jungle first and blue side to go red jungle first. So that way you have the jungles kind of in the same... Like same area, so that way if one decides to go for a game, the other one should be in the same in the same kind of rotation, so that they're somewhat close to the, the right. lane that's going to be gank. So you want to try to mirror what the other jungler is doing okay. to, to set up the to either set up a gank or a counter gank. Now I've seen Kled a few times with his mount. Um, I don't know all of his moves and everything. I know he has some kind of charge ability that he has. Um, but besides that, I'm not super familiar with him. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, Kled and how he works here against Jax on the top lane. Yeah. Well, the main thing is kind of is the fact that he kind of has that mouth of his riding. So if you notice, his health bar is kind of broken up into two different colors. So the, the first part is the mouth health. So once that 
goes, once it exceeds that threshold, the mouth actually goes away, and that really exposes Kled because he loses a lot of his mobility, it even changes some of his abilities. So he has to wait a little while before he gets that mount back. But while he has that mount, he definitely does have a, a lot of mobility. But he's a very fun character to play. So looking at the uh, ooh, so, uh, some pushes going on here with Kled on the top lane, really uh, getting some pokes in on Jax. Yeah, playing very aggressive against the Jax, which is interesting because Jax has that ability to, to do the countering, mm -hmm. where if they try to attack well, he has that up, they can uh, pretty much react with a stun. But we do see Crestman just trying to go for that aggressive play style. And even so, getting some vision down, so yeah. at least they can spot out where Hecarim is. So that gives Botling at least a green light to be able to try to push a little bit. Which they got vision just there. Hecarim came right by that ward that uh, Kled was able to place after pushing Jax up a little bit. So um, you can see the pings going out, so yeah, they know exactly where uh, Hecarim is. Meanwhile, Sejuani uh, in the river trying to get a little bit of vision there. Get a little bit of extra farm too from that little uh, river. I don't remember what he's called. He's a little good guy. Uh, scuttle something, scuttle board. I'll oh, call it scuttle board. Scuttle I know it's scuttle something. We see some really nice damage going on in the bot lane. Yeah, the, the synergy between these two, uh, the support and ADC, is uh, really good as far as the characters. And everything. No, they're, they're designed that way. So yeah. there's like a little extra perks that you get uh, if you have both Zion and Rakan in your on your team. So a lot of groups try to prioritize both and it's impossible. CS is pretty close across the board right here. Um, Oriana with a small lead over Viger, uh, but top lane and uh, bottom lane are both fairly close. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the mid lane. I mean, Viger is a late game scaling champion. You gotta give him a chance to just kind of get his AP up. So as he gets more minion kills, as he gets champion kills, his AP is going to scale by a lot. And You'll see him be able to do tons of damage. So there we see the mounts going away. So that is going to limit uh, Clash of Lilies. And now he's in a lot of danger, actually. First blood goes to Jax, uh, Mountain Union for top lane. And we see Hector going for the, the gank here. And we see the flash being used by uh, Brimstone to get away. So it's a good use of the flash. But that does mean he's now exposed. And part of that is, oh, well, they did have some vision. It's just not in that tri bush. Instead, yeah, it's, it's a, on the river bush instead, so. I don't know if uh, Kled top lane didn't notice how low he was with his mount. He just thought he could take it a little bit longer, but yeah, once he lost that mount, it really left him in a vulnerable position for Jax to be able to capitalize. I think he thought that, that Jax was also pretty low, so he's probably thinking, okay, I can get him down, but that counter came in, stunned him, and then finished him off. We'll see the Rakan trying to go in, just trying to get a knock up here and there to give Zaya a chance to uh, either push the lane or try to get a little damage uh, onto uh, the players. So actually right now, from at least a CS perspective of the bot lane, uh, Zaya is doing pretty well. Uh, mid lane is both choosing to do their first back, go back and uh, buy a few new items. Try to help progress their lane efficiency. They're really pushing this uh, bottom lane here, uh, but they do have Sejuani down in the bot lane to kind of get a little bit of cover, kind of hovering around there uh, along Dragon. Yeah, I think it's just trying to get some vision there because we're at the point where, like, depending how bot lane goes, once they're very quick at the Dragon. So yeah, he, yeah, he got the the Scuttle Ward there just so they have some extra vision down there. So if Hecarim decides to go down to try to get another game, because right now bot lane is pushed pretty far, so we see Hecarim starting to head towards that direction. That if he does go through the river, they can catch it, but it doesn't look like he's going to go through the river. But we do see that they chose to put a uh, a ward over in Tribush though. So now they have river and they have Tribush. So if he comes either of those directions, they'll be able to know. Yeah, they learned. They did. <laughs> Looks like Sejuani may be sharing the blue buff here with uh, Viger. Yeah, you, at this point, you definitely want to get Viger that mana so he can just keep using his Qs, keep building up his AP. So if he can get that going, he's going to do some insane damage. Should I say it? Tons of damage. Tons <laughs> of damage. Please don't sue me, Riot. Alright, 
um, uh, Marietta making a few pings here. Maybe looking at that blue buff timer. Uh, trying to maybe guess when Hecarim's gonna be where, because uh, blue buff's gonna be popping here in just a few uh, minutes. Actually, I guess. Yeah, actually notice that they have a ward there. Mm -hmm. So as soon as Hecarim goes for it, they know exactly when he's gonna be there. And that might give him the time to maybe go for a Cloud Drake or make a play, because if they know that he's on that side of the map, then that means that opens it up to maybe do some kind of play on the other side of the map. It keeps that smite away to where they can't smite that dragon for a, a quick steal back, or uh, at least that's one less player that they know, well, they're up there. We're not worried about them coming down and stopping our Drake. Yes. Which it looks like uh, maybe they're just trying to go for that blue buff there. Oh, we get oh. the charge going out. And Sejuani coming right in with it. And the Jax pops the uh, flash. But Kled's pushing in a lot, but he's going to be taking too many hits. Okay, yeah. he doesn't lose his mount. No, he, he does not lose his mount. Uh, yeah, so he almost got greedy there a little bit. But at least they well, both Kled and Jax burned the flash to, to engage that. But at least yeah, they still... Sejuani coming in here over at Hecarim. Hecarim's a little low health. Pulls back though, no one's uh, collapsing. You know, Orianna's kind of coming down here for Sejuani. Sejuani makes an escape, so no worries there. Yep. Um, it did open up though, uh, that push on Jax. Uh, you see Jano getting, getting, getting pretty low, but far enough away that probably not going to get a kill just yet. But we did get a push with uh, Jax there just a little bit ago with Kled and Sejuani. That did push Jax back to base, uh, opening Kled for a little bit of free farm. So he got a little bit of extra CS during that time. Um, and obviously a little bit of uh, tower damage as well. But speaking of tower damage, we're getting some tower damage bot lane here. Uh, Hecarim's coming down, but he's a long way away. So you may see a gank here if bot lane decides to push a little bit further. Uh, Jane is already low, so she's probably looking to go back soon. Um, all right, we got a lot of action coming down here. River by Drake. And we see some damage going on. It uh, looks like um, Mary is hovering over the Cloud Drake, so they may be going for it. Oh, this could be a little risky because Hecarim is there. This could be just an attempt to bait the Hecarim. It looks like they're gonna try to maybe send him away, but his ult is ulti is up, so they can definitely try to go for a steal. This is definitely gonna clear. And you see the ult but they do get the dragon, but here comes Hecarim. But he is trapped in the cage and he will go down. He's going for that steal on dragon, hoping between his smite and his ulti that he'd be able to take it, but he was not able to. Meanwhile, they're rotating bot lane here. Um no Jaina. Uh, Jaina had to go back. No Hecarim now because he's currently dead, so it's just Misfortune here trying to hold his bot lane currently. Maybe a little bit of free damage here coming. But they, they choose to go back. It's a good time to buy. Uh, Misfortune's on her own. Jax also a little low having to choose to go back. Um, but we do see a good bit of vision played out through, uh, through the river for uh, Marietta currently. a teleport happening top lane with Kled just trying to get back into lane quicker to get that farm so he doesn't miss out by the tower taking it so there will be his uh, teleport down for a little bit here um, actually looks like everyone's teleport is down currently so we shouldn't be seeing any kind of teleport plays happening at least for a little while see Jaina and Hecarim trying to get a little bit more vision along the uh, river here open up a little bit of, uh, of avenues for their Hecarim to get some ganks through. Uh, Viger pushing in, but with his stun and stuff, able to buy some time for Sejuani to come in. Sejuani really pushing in on the front line here. The able to Shockwave will put him back, but here comes the Kled with the charge. Really focusing on the Hecarim, take the Hecarim down, Oriana having to flash into the red buff. Red buff though currently attacking Oriana. Now we see the, the cage, so Jaina is trapped. I'm gonna say Jane is gonna be going down. Misfortune though, trying to get away. Sejuani chasing down. Will they go for a tower dive here? I imagine so, as low as Misfortune is. Sejuani can take a few of those hits, letting their ADC come in through. 
So there's uh, uh, two uh, kills for Marietta right now. Actually, that was three kills. Was it three? Oh, yeah, yeah there was Hecarim uh, at the beginning of the yeah, engagement it was, there, it was you're right. three kills to zero, so... Uh, yeah, very well done, just being able to first pounce on the Hecarim. The Hecarim is the, the big threat, so if he can take him out, then... He's in good shape. He's also the closest thing they have to like a tank right now. So there's, if, if you can get him down, everyone else is so squishy that they're, they're gonna melt. Especially all, if you have all your guys there. Oh, the thing that's interesting, if you look at his item build, I don't see anything there that's really tanking. You got the the hammer, which has like a little bit of uh, some help, but it doesn't look like he's really going for any tanky items, and, and neither is Jack. So it, it's almost like they're not really going for having any front lines. So we see uh, Mountain University knowing Viger and Sejuani are over in the jungle uh, taking out their wards and stuff currently. So they're going to be trying to place some more wards, get a little bit more vision here, um, try to reopen up those uh, avenues of engagement. Meanwhile, bot lane here, a lot of damage going on to Jaina, blowing her up. Misfortune having to back off. Yeah, it's just well played by Rokan, just going in there, knocking Dana up, and then Zaya just be able to finish her off, so very well executed. Now we we'll just have to see what's going to be the next play. Uh, turret plating has fallen, so they're not, so no one's going to be able to get any bonus scope for any more turret plates. But now you have to start thinking about things like Rift Herald, and the fact that Cloud is going to be up in about a minute, so maybe trying to get some vision set up. We do see the Pioneers have some control wards down in that river, so that does give them a big advantage. But we do see that uh, Mount Eagle has the vision advantage in the top side of the jungle, so they could try to go for Rift Herald because they have that vision. Yeah, and uh, Mary is going to be a little careful. If they do utilize their vision to go after Drake, they may be leaving uh, Rift Herald open and losing that uh, possible objective as well. Yeah, so it's just come down to what Marietta prioritizes, and we see the tanks come down from Cloud Drake. So it looks like they are putting the priority in, on Cloud Drake because uh, they are trying to converge over there. Although it looks like they are going to engage on the Oriana. The time deep in the front line there, but Sejuani coming in too. And she pops the Zanya, saving herself, but Jaina will take the fall instead. Meanwhile, uh, Kled taking on Jax here with a charge, and it looks like Jax may be going down a flash to try to help capture this, and he does. Meanwhile, we have Drake. Spawning, so uh, they're gonna be wide open here to take this Drake. They should be able to get this. Um, I mean, Hector and Misfortune are nearby, but they're, they know they can't contest this, so that's gonna be another Cloud Drake uh, for Marriott. So that's gonna actually help Clad because double Cloud Drake is gonna give him extra movement speed. He's already very mobile, so he's gonna be super mobile. Oh, and Oriana got caught in the cage, almost went down. You're starting to see a little bit of that power from Viger here, and uh, just how much damage he can do. And there's the first turret taken on the top lane by Kled. It looks second. like there could be a rotation, possibly up to Rift Herald. So Juani's up there, either getting vision or maybe preparing it, making sure that uh, Mount Union doesn't have any vision. No, they're going for it. I can see the health bar dropping a little bit, so they're going straight for Rift Herald. Because they can tank this, and I don't think Mount Union can contest it. Well, if you look in the bottom part of the uh, Mount Union's jungle, you see wards everywhere right now so there's plenty of vision they know where Hecarim is they know where Jaina is they know where Misfortune is they only have to worry about Jax and Orianna because they can't see them currently so it was a free Rift Herald yeah so right now Barry has complete control of that and Jax just drops very good move by Larson there Viger's really gotten a chance to kind of build up that AP a little bit so he, his, his hits hit really hard right now Looks like the next turret, yeah, so all three of the outer turrets are now for the Pioneers. So, now will be pushing for the uh, inner towers. So it's just a question of what lane they want to go for first. It looks like they're going to try to back first and buy. They, they got some gold, so let's use it. And they also have to start thinking about where they're going to drop the Rift Herald. I mean, that Rift Herald only lasts so long, and what you don't want to do is have it and then let it expire before you get a chance to use it, because that just... Be such a waste. Yeah, it would. Who uh, who currently has it right now? Uh, Noxa, Sejuani. Sejuani currently has it right it. now, so um, we'll see. Will they use it for a mid lane push? Trying to get a 
trying to push into that inhibitor. The mid lane is usually a really good one that if you can get a good push on it, it really opens up the other lanes to get pushed a lot harder. Yeah, I would anticipate that, but what they may do is actually use it in one of the side lanes to divert attention to them while they go push mid. Gotcha. So I can see them doing that as well. So in fact, we do see Kled kind of coming down to the bottom. It's almost like a, almost like a lane swap technically. So we see Kled trying to put some pressure down there. We see Zaya going up to the top lane. Jack's taking that top tower though. First tower taken for Mount Union, I think, in this series, actually. Well, um, I don't believe they even got a tower last uh, last I game. Don't so. remember, you right. I don't remember. I don't remember. We see the charge coming in. Jumping on this misfortune here. Play will like, take several about, hits. It's like, I don't care about turret shots. I'm just going to get the kill. Although he might pay for that because he just lost his mount. Getting collapsed in by Oriana, Hecarim, and Jaina, but he does have. Well, while he's down, uh, Sejuani and Viger have come in. So that is a two for one right now, although Viger is getting very low. Oriana's going to try to get the kill, and a teleport goes in for Jax. Getting a stun up, trying to help Sejuani get an escape here. And they will get away, just by a sliver, but they do get away. Very close on both of them. Uh, ADC and support come down to try to help uh, guarantee their escape, make sure that no one pushes in while they're backing. Yeah. Yeah, just great job there by the bot lane just coming in to, to help them out. They saw the engage going, so they rotate down very quickly to help, so whether they're continuing fighting or at least help them escape, like you said. And then while they did lose Kled there, Viger got so low, Sejuani was able to pull away some tension and slow everyone down a bit. And then while Sejuani, Sejuani was getting low, uh, the cooldown came off of Viger where he was able to get that stun down, buy her a little bit of time to be able to escape there as well. So very good synergy in plays between uh, uh, Marietta right there. Right now you see Viger at 4 0 and 4. This is going to be scary. That's, a, that's one very scary Viger. Oh. Well, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. So we have a 504 Vigar, so he's even scarier than before. Yeah, you, you gotta be careful with Vigar here. Um, with no, with no, uh, with no tank, with no like magic resist, nothing to kind of uh, hold him back at all. His, his hits are just destroying most of the players on that right now. I know. I mean, if you look at their items. I don't see any magic resist being put together by Infernal. And we see the right there. There goes the, the bot tower. So they're going to make a push for the inhibitor tower. I think they're pushing this here, trying to help their Rift Herald get through. Um, everyone's here right now. So we're maybe seeing a, a major engagement here, maybe at least a little bit of damage on the bottom tower, but looks like Mary's gonna have to pull back a little bit. Uh, maybe kind of a waste on Rift Herald there, he didn't get too much there. The the second tier tower was already fairly low, so I don't see him really doing too much damage, but... I think they wanted to at least get that down, and uh, Rift Herald was able to get a second charge. Like, if you get two charges, that's good, and we see the engage going here, speaking of charge... There's the charge by Kled, taking out Hecarim. Meanwhile, Sejuani comes down bot lane, takes out Misfortune. We've lost the ADC already. Jack's trying to back off, but trying to save Jaina. Jaina goes down as well. Currently, we're sitting with our uh, top lane Jax, who gets blown up by Viger. Uh, all that's left right now is our Oriana trying to hold this bottom lane against an entire Marietta team. I don't think there's much that she's, she can do. She's going to have to back off here, or else she's going to be dying as well. Yeah, that's a four for zero. She's able to do a little bit of poke, but Viger coming in. There's the ace. This is going to be an inhibitor tower. And how long do we have till anyone responds? Misfortune uh, just now popping right now. And Hecarim's coming up, and, and John is coming out. So they're backing out. So as much as they'd like to try to finish the game, they're not going to be able to. But we do see Clad in the mid lane, split pushing to get the, uh, the mid inner tower down. So having there was an ace, an inhibitor tower, a bottom tower, and a second tier tower in mid lane. So that was a lot of gold for Marietta right there. I mean, if you look at it right now, 22 minutes into the game. 10,000 gold lead. That's, that's insane. And they're getting the, the mountain drake, so that's going to help them push the remaining towers even faster. So this is a substantial lead for the pioneers. So it's just going to go back to what are they going to look for next? They're probably going to be looking at either uh, Baron, or they're probably going to be looking for the, the top inner tower next. Which looks like Mount Union is thinking the same thing. Jack just coming in over by Baron, placing a ward, try to get some vision in that area. Meanwhile, though, Marietta coming in here to the, the top jungle, maybe heading towards a Baron, maybe trying to get a little vision, try to prepare for that. Or 
if they know where Mount Yu is at, they might just go. Uh, I don't think they're going to go for it just yet. They're, they should set up Vision at least. Well, one good thing they have here is with Super Minions pushing bot lane, that's going to pull some people away to leave Baron open a little bit more. Where you, if you have one person down there, maybe two people down there defending it, Baron's opened up a much more and much more capable of taking it. Like, I mean, we do see Orianna and Misfortune down there having to respond to the Super Minions, and only Orianna has a teleport. So if Marietta were to go for a Baron right now, it would be a 4v5 best case scenario for Mount Union. But as we say that, Misfortune kind of coming up here, leaving Orianna, who does have her teleport available. So maybe if something does happen, we can get Orianna to teleport in uh, and be part of that engagement. Although we do see an engage going on to the tech room. And he's going to have to ult just to get away. But Janna gets blown up by Larson. You see the Flutter Thunder's coming out. And there goes tech room. And there goes Jax. And there goes Misfortune. Once again, all that's left right now, Orianna. That's going to be a Baron. There's no way Orianna is going to be able to contest that and hold that uh, hold that Baron at all. Yeah, I mean, even if she pops her Shockwave, she just doesn't have enough gold to do any follow-up. They're taking Baron right now. Orianna is placed up top to maybe try to stop him. No, she's back in, so she's not going to try to hold that top tower. Meanwhile, uh, bottom is being pushed fairly hard by uh, Super Minions. Mary is going to back, use that gold and everything they got from that engagement from that Baron, and we may be seeing a final push coming up here very soon. No vision in uh, bottom jungle right now, but if you look over at Pioneer's uh, top jungle, there is wards everywhere, so they have plenty of vision up towards the top. Um, not really needing it down bottom because they're not going to be pushing that way anymore with having the super minions. So trying to get these towers mid and top lane, they really want that vision there in that top jungle. It also helped them whenever they were going for that Baron to make sure they knew if anyone was coming in after him. So, currently we see a lot more push up towards uh, top lane here. Um, with all this vision they have, they're very safe. Of course they're safe with all this extra gold they have. They, they have a much better build right now on their uh, on all the characters. Over Pine, uh, over uh, Mount Union right now. Uh, top tower going down. We're looking like maybe one last stand possibly here by Mount Union trying to defend this top inhibitor. Meanwhile, though, Kled trying to do a split push, pushing mid lane a little bit. Uh, Hecarim taking it down to half damage already. With not having any tanks, anyone to soak this damage a little bit while anyone can do some damage. Viker can jump in right in there, no problem. Take out Jaina one hit. We have top tower going down. This is going to be a top inhibitor going down. They're going to just, looks like they're moving over here to take mid lane as well. Hecarim's down. It, everyone's melting right now. We're down to down to Oriana left. Oriana trying to do what she can, trying to hold this uh, this base together, but she only has so much poke, and we still have a full team from Marietta right now. There goes one tower down. Here comes the second tower down. Um, can anyone spawn to help them to save this Nexus? I don't think so. I think that's going to be it, guys. That was the final push right there, and, it, and that's going to be a 2-0 victory of Marietta over Mount Union in the League of Legends Great Lakes Esports Conference. So very good job to the uh, Marietta uh, League of Legends team. Some very good plays there. Uh, the first game was done very well. Very good engagements, very good uh, disengages, and very good synergy overall between uh, not just the, uh, the characters that they chose, but also the players and being able to rotate whenever someone was low and pull some attention off of each other to keep each other alive the best they could. Even in that game there, they only had three deaths throughout the entire 26 minutes while having 26 kills on their own with almost uh, almost a kill a minute. So, very good job. Guys, uh, hold on just a little bit while we try to get our Overwatch stuff set up. Uh, we may also be having some uh, possible conversations with some teammates. Uh, we'll see what we have here in the next few minutes. So bear with us, bear with us for just a few and we'll see you guys here.